Welcome back guys to this video. Today we're doing try hack me and we're gonna take a look at task six from the threat modeling room and today it's gonna be the stride framework. Now frame, stride framework is much like dredge framework and the other frameworks. It's used for threat modeling and it could be part of your risk management. So as you can see here this is the official page of the framework from Microsoft um, uh, it's explained and what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we are doing try hack me and we're carrying over with threat modeling room so in this task we're going to cover the stride framework and reminding you guys that I'm covering or I'm dedicating a single video for every framework here so that we maximize the learning efficiencies and you understand every single framework on its own so basically today's framework will be stride and it is much similar to dread and other threat modeling frameworks so basically we study threats we map the threats to uh, the current organization assets and based on that we prioritize the uh, patching of vulnerabilities, the mitigation of risks, and so on and so forth. So all of this could be part of your information security program where you um, conduct risk assessments and research threats. So Stride Framework is one of these frameworks that helps you um, categorize threats according to five different categories or six categories. So it uses six categories based on which you can study threats and map them to the organization's assets. So remember first we have to identify the assets in the organization. Now Stride is best used for those assets um, that actually deal with software. So basically if you are designing a new software or if you want to implement a security framework in the SDLC or software development lifecycle, you could use the stride model. Now, in the previous video, we discovered or we talked about the DREAD framework. DREAD framework is much broader than the stride framework. If we take a look at the categories, so it, as you can see, we talked, with, we, we said that we had the damage, reproducibility, exploitability. So it's also best used for um all sorts of vulnerabilities right affecting all sorts of uh, assets now stride is kind of different it's best used against software vulnerabilities or when you implement a new software and you want to study um, and research the threats and the vulnerabilities that could hit the new implementation of the software so we have these categories six categories and they actually compose the word stride. So as you can see, S for spoofing, T for tampering, R for repudiation, I for information disclosure, D for denial of service, E for privileged escalation or elevation of privilege. And also explain these in the document here, cyber threat intelligence. So we already said that stride is developed by microsoft and it is used for threat modeling now let's go over the categories as you can see first we have spoofing so spoofing all of you know guys it's the impersonation of identities an example would be sending an email as another user another example is used widely in phishing attacks so when you receive an email um, claiming to be from facebook but in reality, it's not from Facebook. This is a form of spoofing, impersonation of identities. So that's the first threat that Stride deals with, spoofing. Next, we have tampering. Tampering is the unauthorized modification of data. Unauthorized modification of data can be the result of many different sorts of attacks. An example would be updating the password of another user. This could happen throughout uh, any stage in the cyber kill chain now the attacker could be modifying the data on your database even if they don't have access to the server 
or even if they haven't yet compromised the server or they could be updating the password of a user that is part of the user accounts after they compromise the server so this is what we mean by tampering repudiation now repudiation was part of the CIA tri they tried confidentiality integrity and availability now any system should implement repudiation so that we prove that a specific user took a specific action like sending an email or um, implementing or performing a change on the server or on um, uh, any file like deleting a file modifying a file so in order to prove that we need to implement repudiation and repudiation is achieved through logging so repudiation here is categorized as a potential threat and they mean they didn't mean the repudiation itself they meant the lack of repudiation meaning the lack of logging is a threat information disclosure information disclosure is pretty self-explanatory here it's where the attacker is able to disclose or leak data this could happen before the system compromise or after the system compromise denial of service all of you know that rendering a system unavailable meaning the system or the server won't be able to process any requests example is flooding a web server with too many requests and the last category is elevation of privilege very self-explanatory as well when an attacker um, compromises a server and they get access to a regular user that's not an admin now moving from a non-admin into an admin or from non-root into a root account is the elevation of privilege and is a threat that the framework deals with now in Microsoft as you can see we have the same explanations here so in Trihackme we have similar explanation as well all right now it's time to take an example on this framework all right so there is a very cool example laid down in this room here so we click on view site and we start the so as you can see here you don't need to read these details we can click on continue now here we are in a scenario where we have a threat modeling or threat intelligence team they want to assess the risks of a new implementation of a payment system so in the example here uh, let's see where is the scenario or the plot so your e-commerce company is in the process of designing a new payment processing system so designing a new payment processing system is part of software development lifecycle it could be also part of a change management so if you are changing from uh, a system into a system this also could be part of a change management so whenever we implement a new change in the organization whenever we introduce a new software a new technology a new policy okay we need to <coughs> integrate that in the information security program it means we need to assess the risk of this update or this change that change it is a new payment processing system so part of risk assessment is studying the threats so here we use this threat framework to assess the threats to this new payment processing system this involves you interviewing all of the uh, team members who are in the process of developing or who are part of developing the new payment processing system so first thing we have to interview the software development so you are asking can I provide an overview of the applications architecture you want to get information about the application architecture right understand the application in order to understand what are the threats that the application could face first the application or the payment processing system consists of registration and authentication user dashboard search functionality and payment okay that's the components of the application now let's go to the system architecture team and understand more about the infrastructure so <coughs> the payment processing system will be hosted on 
Our online banking platform leverages several AWS services to support its functionality. So Amazon EC2, we also use relational database systems or servers, the rows and columns. That's what we mean by RDS and Amazon S3 buckets to store the data. Okay, that's our infrastructure. We also plan to use Elastic Load Balancer to handle traffic distribution. But this or that is still in the works. So this means we lack load balancing capabilities. Okay, now we go to the Information Security Department. We are part of this department. We want to see the security policies. So can you help me identify potential threats and vulnerabilities to our organization, including all of its infrastructure and internal architecture? Now, basic as you can see, guys, here we, you are asking the department of the potential threats. This could this could sound um, this could sound contradictory because you are you are the responsible person of researching the threats and the vulnerabilities. But anyway, you could also ask the information security department about uh, what they could what they have uh, researched. So, as you can see, we have the DDoS. SQL injection attacks, brute forcing of credentials, enumeration of exposed assets. In addition, our internal network can be infiltrated with phishing attacks containing malicious payloads that may infect our employees' workstations and obtain our internal sensitive data. That's a typical threat that could hit an organization, not any uh, specific one. Phishing attacks. Okay, now we go to strategic planning. We see what the resources that are allocated. So, our top priorities are to protect customers' financial data, the transactions processing system, and ensure the availability and integrity of our platform. Here we uh, look at things from the business perspective. And lastly, we check the network team. So can you provide me some information regarding our internal network infrastructure, including the servers you maintain and workstation used by our employees? So as you can see, your network hosts database servers, firewalls, mail servers, and file servers. This also is beneficial in case you host some of the new, new technology in your local infrastructure. So you want to see what are the uh, parts that compose the infrastructure, firewalls, servers, so you will be able to uh, find out what are the possible threats. Although we are still working with the logging functionality of these servers, in addition, most of the workstation's employees use our Windows 10, and we're pushing to have an automated way of way of pushing security updates. So we still lack updates and we lack fun logging functionalities. Okay. All right, so based on the interviews we conducted with the organization's teams, we learned what are the assets, the network assets, the technology infrastructure. We also learned the possible threats from the information security department. Now, your, your job as a person responsible for researching threats is to use the Stride framework to research the possible threats that could hit um, the new payment processing system. So you sit down and you start with every single category. So we start with spoofing. Or you could, or what you could do, you could take the input from the information security department and map it to the Stride framework. For example, let's go up or let's use them here. So, insecure web application search functionality leading to SQL injection. So, SQL injection is a potential threat that could hit the new implementation of the payment processing system. So, what could SQL injection do? It could allow for tampering of data. Because if the SQL injection is successful, a user or attacker or an attacker might be able to modify database uh, records like the username, the password, product details, so on and so forth. So here we check the tampering and we also check the information disclosure because an attacker might also be able to leak database records. So we have spoofing and we have 
time frame. Now the, the rest are not, uh, sorry, information disclosure and time frame. The rest don't apply. Submit. Now the next thing we learned that the database server, uh, sorry, the permit processing system and its functionalities are hosted on Amazon infrastructure. We learned that the Amazon infrastructure doesn't have load balancers. It means there's a very high chance for denial of service. So no load balancers could mean denial of service. Also, we learned that the AWS kind of insecure and lacks updates. So it could also, it could also uh, open the chances for information disclosure by means of ex vulnerability exploitation. So we have two here. Mail server with no logging enabled. No logging means anyone can do whatever they want without uh, or with the ability of denying, right? We have no logging, we cannot prove anything. So repudiation is checked. And remember, spoofing can also happen. Lastly, we have unpatched employee workstations. Unpatched workstations, it means no updates. No updates, it means kernel exploitation, which means elevation of privileges. Okay. Uh, denial of service, nope. Repudiation, nope. Information disclosure, spoofing, and also tampering. These vulnerabilities that uh, can be exploitable uh, because of lack of updates could also allow for tampering of data. Can I submit? And this is your flag. So that's the flag for this task. Let's answer some questions. What foundational information security concept does this right framework build upon? The CI try. It aims to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. What policy does information disclosure violate? Confidentiality. Which right component involves unauthorized modification or manipulation of data? Tampering. And which right component refers to the disruption of systems availability? It's the denial of service. So this is for stride framework. And lastly, we're going to go over past the framework, but in the next video. So when you finish this room, you will have all of the threat modeling frameworks. You can use any one of them when you conduct threat modeling and you want to find out what are the possible threats that could hit uh, your organization's new technology or the current technology. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you later.